Well, folks, Russiagate 3.0 is in full swing. Uh, as everyone should have been able to see coming, uh, the whole uh, tenant media scandal <clears throat> is just the latest excuse to censor all criticism of the American regime and label it as uh, Russian propaganda. Unfortunately, because uh, the so-called right-wing media in America is full of a bunch of um, uh, self-obsessed backstabbers, people were very quick to jump over uh, uh, all over the people involved in this uh, supposed scandal uh, because they had a personal axe to grind with these people. Uh, and, you know, and, and honestly, there are people involved in this who I don't like either, who I think are cringy, who, you know, if they really did, um, uh, if, they, if there was a, a legitimate reason, I'd be happy to laugh at them and, and, and point and ridicule them. You take a couple of guys like Dim Fool or Benny Johnson, uh, they're easy targets for ridicule. They're easy to make fun of. People have made fun of these guys for years and years and years, and there's a lot to criticize them over. Um, you know, if you have been tracking them throughout their careers, you know, if you go back to the days when uh, Benny was at, uh, what was it, IJR? I think that was when I first became aware of him. And, you know, back when Tim was, uh, you know, just a Periscope streamer, had uh, 20,000 subs on YouTube. Uh, these guys, they've done plenty of dumb things over the course of their careers the past, you know, the past uh, eight years or so, past decade. But taking your dislike of those two uh, men and uh, jumping on the Russiagate bandwagon, like, you know, could you be any more of a snake? Is there a worse person on the so-called right today than Will Chamberlain? Will Chamberlain, who's such a bitch that he uses block lists, um, and I know this because uh, I back in the day, I was on every blo – when block lists existed on Twitter, I was on every block list known to man because uh, I, you know, I had a very old account. And uh, <laughs> there are quite a few people on the so-called right you know, uh, who believe in free speech supposedly uh, who loved to use block lists. Uh, and and uh, again, the reason I know this is because I'm blocked by all these people, and I've never interacted with any of them. So Will Chamberlain's one of them. Ashley St. Clair is another, um, who even uh, even back when I could see her tweets, <laughs> I didn't like them very much because, uh, you know, she was she came across to me as uh, you know a shallow hoe. Although I have to give her credit for going this long, I believe, without ever creating an OnlyFans. So I guess, you know, she is she is better than the average woman on the Internet. And who knows, maybe in the years since I've been blocked, maybe she's gotten smarter. But I remember she used to be pretty dumb, uh, kind of like Will Chamberlain, although he hasn't gotten any smarter. If anything, Will Chamberlain has gotten dumber. And, you know, it, it's very easy for uh, Will Chamberlain to criticize uh, people over taking foreign money since he is a trust fund baby and doesn't need to take any money from anyone but his parents. Um, and, and I'm not saying that as a dig. I'm not someone who likes to smear people for being trust fund babies because you know what? It does give you um, an independence if you want to be a pundit. Like you can afford, literally, if you don't have to worry about money, you can afford to say whatever you want because you know that that, that joint bank account or that trust fund is always going to be there for you. And so, um, you know, with a good person, that would give them the freedom to say, you know, uh, and uh, really good and interesting things. And in Will Chamberlain's case, he chooses to use that freedom just to say dumb things. I don't begrudge him that. Um, <clears throat> although maybe I do begrudge his family for subsidizing his boring and uninteresting commentary on nearly every issue. But anyway, why this rant about Will Chamberlain? I'm, all, I'm four and a half minutes into this video. Uh, has there been any news, uh, si you know, since I talked about uh, tenant media yesterday? Um, well, you know, there's a couple developments. You know, it's just the narrative is shaping up. And people are falling in. People are dogpiling. Um, Nikki Haley, most notably. Nikki Haley, former, uh, former board member of Boeing, 
Boeing, a, a, whose uh, so-called Starliner um, was marooned in space. They had to enlist the help of SpaceX and Elon Musk to get their astronauts back down to Earth. Boeing, whose planes are literally falling apart midair, they're crumbling. Bo uh, Boeing planes and the Boeing Starliner are all manufactured, or many of them, manufactured under Nikki Haley's watch as a member of the board of directors. There was a handful of people at Boeing who were as powerful and as uh, influential and had as much control over that company as Nikki Haley. And we see how that's going for them. Boeing, a titan of American industry, absolutely crumbling. They're a laughing stock. People are afraid to go on Boeing planes. That is um, a testament to Nikki Haley's leadership. And so what did she have to say on the matter? What is her take on the tenant media scandal, on Russiagate 3.0? Well, it was quite simple, actually. I believe she was quote tweeting a video uh, on or a tweet from Lauren Chen about how, you know, hey, we shouldn't <laughs> maybe maybe uh, we shouldn't have our tax dollars and our um, uh, soldiers. We sh maybe we shouldn't spend expend their lives, expend our money on fighting for Ukraine. Maybe that's not in our best interests. Maybe just maybe. And. Uh, Nikki Haley just replied simply, karma's a bitch, making it absolutely clear that this is a witch hunt about ideology. The regime is attacking Lauren Chen, Tenet Media, and everyone connected to them, including people who, you know, um, uh, by all accounts had absolutely nothing to do with taking $10 million, who did not receive $10 million from Russia, um, uh, Taylor Hansen. Um, he's, he's seemingly a total bystander in this. He, he is being unpersoned. He has had his, um, YouTube channel completely wiped off the face of the earth, you know, as has Lauren Chen, of course, as has Tenant Media. Um, Tenant Media as an entity, from what I understand, has ceased to exist. And anyone associated with them, again, including you, Tim Pool, um, you're all under attack. And, uh, you know, Tim Pool went on for a struggle session with uh, Ben Shapiro, where Ben Shapiro was grilling him about being a Russian agent, um, you know, trying to – and this was supposedly to help cover for Tim, you know. Um, uh, ben was playing devil's advocate, supposedly, trying to help out his good buddy Tim Pool, give him an opportunity to defend himself against these charges. Oh, my God, Tim, how could you or, or anyone related to you take money from a foreign government? That's insane. I mean, what are you, a traitor? And then Ben had to pause the episode uh, for a word from his sponsor, which was uh, some Israeli company. I forget what exactly they sell, but it was a it was a, it was something. It was a product that's made that's made in Israel by an Israeli company. And it's like, oh my God, <laughs> how could you, Tim? How how, I, 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 how how can anyone take take money from a from a foreign country that it, it sponsor and influence their show? That's terrible. Now a word from our sponsor, Israel. <laughs> you know, for uh, Ben Shapiro of all people to be to be doing the the dual loyalty struggle session. I don't care if every single one of these people, from Lauren Chen to Tim Pool to Benny Johnson to um, poor bystander Taylor Hansen, I don't care if they were on tape swearing a loyalty oath, a blood debt, um, to. Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin, if you're one of these hardcore Zionists, you just don't have a right to criticize that because that is you. <laughs> and like that's not a smear. That's what you claim to be. That is, you know, that's your ideology. And I don't just mean Jewish Zionists. I mean the Christian Zionists too. It's the same thing. Like you guys are very – like Glenn Beck. Ben Shapiro and Glenn Beck are uh, – to me, like when it comes to the Israel stuff, like they're you know they're in, they're on an equal footing, you know. Being Jewish um, is not a requirement to be loyal to Israel. Glenn Beck's been awarded medals by the Israeli government, I think, at least once, for being such a strong 
Israeli government asset in the United States. And, and remember, um, uh, old Glenn Beck had the, I believe, third highest rated network or cable television show when he was on Fox. And of course, he's built his um, his whole uh, <clears throat> streaming service a media company. He was one, you know, one of the first ones to make the pivot to streaming. Before, uh, before I believe, uh, sh- you know, Shapiro and and all these other guys jumped into it. Uh, you know, long before Tim Pool was was doing a you know a, a live stream. Beck, I think, started you know doing a pay a paywalled uh, online live stream like back in 2010. And all the while, he has been firmly loyal to the Israeli government. And their interests. He advocates openly for their wants, their needs, their dreams. Netanyahu specifically, not just any Israeli leader, Netanyahu in particular, he has a personal relationship with people like Glenn Beck, with people like Ben Shapiro. I remember as a very young boy watching Netanyahu uh, interviewed by Glenn Beck. And what a per- great personal relationship they had, how close they were. Do I think that Netanyahu was paying Glenn Beck under the table? Uh, no, no, I think Glenn Beck honestly believed that. But that's not really the issue here. A very small part of the tenant media scandal is the money itself. This is much more about smearing ideas. Because the DOJ, the Department of Justice in America, the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigations, they are labeling ideas as inherently um, Russian. It is the ideas that people associated with tenant media were promoting. This is what is this is you know the evidence that they're citing of Russian influence. It's not just the money, specifically the matters of inflation and immigration. If you are concerned about high levels of immigration into the United States. The types of immigrants who are coming here, people who uh, don't speak English, people who are of different religions, uh, people who have very different values, people who eat animals that we consider to be pets, people who steal um, and who don't believe that's a very bad thing, people who rape and don't believe that that's a very bad thing. You know, this is the problem with mixing cultures is people have different values. You know, certain in certain cultures, rape is just not a bad thing. Like that's just a part of life. It's just understood that, like, if you have a woman who's walking down the street unattended, like, um, you know, uh, she's just a, a public property. She belongs to the streets. Many cultures believe this. And so when you bring those people to the United States, all of a sudden it's not safe for women to walk down the street. Uh, they end up uh, abused, dead, and found in a river. It just happened quite recently here in Fort Myers. I don't believe that the uh, the culprit has been caught yet, um, but the body was found uh, five days after she went missing, uh, floating in the river. And so if you're concerned about those things, if you're concerned about paying uh, $13 for a Big Mac meal, if you're concerned about um, uh, you know restaurants taking away re- free refills, if you're concerned about uh, you know the price of bacon, if you're concerned about uh, the price of um, of other foods, if you're concerned about the price of housing, if you believe that you should, you know, be able to uh, live in a safe neighborhood, um, you know, in a in a small house, let's say 1,200 square feet or less, you know, and and you think that, you know, hey, half a million dollars, that's asking a little much, you know, the average person doesn't have a half a million dollars laying around uh, just to live in a crappy house. If you think things like that, that helps Russia, and that makes those ideas dangerous. If you believe those things, if you espouse those ideas, you are promoting Russian interests, according to the FBI, just as uh, Glenn Beck and Ben Shapiro promote Israeli interests when they say things like, uh, you know, uh, Palestinians are irredeemable subhumans who must be wiped from the face of the earth if there is ever going to be peace on this planet again. Except according to the FBI, it's okay to promote the Israeli interest. But, I mean, we all understand if you say, you know, hey, the Israeli government is, already, is always right, you're promoting the interests of the Israeli government. But, uh, you know, with the Russian thing, it's a little more nuanced. If you say, 
I disagree with the American government, that means that you're pro-Russia inherently. Whether you know it or not, that's the thing. You don't have to know. You don't have to be paid by Russia in order to be pro-Russian. You don't have to even think about Russia. Russia doesn't even can be the furthest thing from your mind. But if you disagree with the U.S. regime and its policies, if you don't believe that a small town in Ohio of 60,000 people uh, should be flooded with 20,000 Haitians who start kidnapping their dogs and cats and roasting them in front of them and that the police should do nothing, um, if you don't believe that, if you think that's a bad thing, you're just helping Russia. You're a traitor, and you belong in prison for a very long time. Your kids should be taken away, put in foster care, and most likely transitioned to another gender. By the time you get out of prison, not only will your children not know who you are, they won't remember what your name was. They won't even remember that they were your child. But if they do know who you are, they'll hate you. These are the stakes. This is what... Donald Trump should be running against. This is what he should be promising to stop. This is what I think his voters believe he will stop. Uh, and he has promised to stop some of these things, though not all of it. Uh, but if his first term is any indication, uh, I'm extremely skeptical that he will do much uh, to help us in the long term. Um, he didn't have the, the balls in the first administration in his first four years. Uh, I hope he does. For our sake, because he is at this point, it's our it's our only hope. That someone gets in there and guts um, the uh, the federal bureaucracy who is causing all of this. You know, I I used to pray for bankruptcy, but unfortunately, our, our monetary system is so insane that I think it might be mathematically impossible for the uh, U.S. government to ever go bankrupt, which is a very sad thing because you know we need that we need just the the, the federal regime to go away entirely. Uh, because it's destroying our society. And by design, that is their goal. It's a narco-tyranny at its finest. Make our personal lives, our daily lives, so miserable and intolerable uh, that we just don't have the time to ever focus on you know, the money that they're skimming off the top, off the corruption. Because, I mean, that's all this is. It's a diversion. You make society you, – you make a society of people who hate each other. Uh, a society of people who cannot live together, a society of incompatible, infinite cultures, and then uh, the powerful people at the top are able to uh, skim as much from the taxpayer as they want and because and, 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 that will be such a minor complaint. That will be such a small problem in comparison to uh, the massive problems that have been created. So anyway, um, with that said, uh, I believe firmly, just based on what I've seen, r regardless of the facts, um, when you have ghouls like Nikki Haley coming out with knives against you, um, Nikki Haley and other people who just believe in death and destruction, like that's their ideology. They want people dead. They want to kill people around the world, whether it's in America or not. I mean, you have people who want to create the chaos here. You have people who want to create the chaos overseas, which, of course, always blows back on us and creates more chaos here. Um, I mean, just like, uh, you know, if, if we were to, let's say, uh, assassinate Maduro in Venezuela, you think the Venezuelan gangs are bad now? Oh. Folks, if we destroyed Venezuela's country and sent their entire population fleeing north, to the United States, it's going to get a lot worse. But anyway, that's another tangent for another day. Um, when you have ghouls like Nikki Haley coming out against you, I promise, no matter what Lauren Chen did, she could be guilty on every charge. She's a far better person. She's a far more respectable person. She's someone who deserves uh, freedom and happiness much more than Nikki Haley. So as long as Nikki Haley is free <laughs> to walk the streets, um, you will never get me to like applaud uh, the jailing of Lauren Chen, even if she is really a, an unregistered foreign agent. And again, I think that foreign agents should be open. Um, 
but most aren't in this country. But you know what? They might not even try and prosecute her under FAR. They could they could go for something much more salacious, like the Espionage Act. They could go for the death penalty for Lauren Chen. Why? Because I don't know. She's one of like the five attractive women on the internet who doesn't have an OnlyFans, and that's just that's 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 too far. I mean, it could be just something that craven. You know, I mean, we do live in a society that is worse than Sodom. Like by far, it's, it's I mean, it's not even close. By the scale of child sacrifice alone, the reverence for that ritual in our society, I mean, just that, leaving out everything else, leaving out the, you know, the butchering of, uh, of, of children's genitals and the, the sexualization of children, all that evil, you leave all that out. Um, the mass slaughter from our, from our endless wars, leave that stuff out, we're still worse than Sodom. Just add up all the abortions. We make Hitler, Stalin, and Mao look like amateurs. So anyway, with that said, I will see you folks back here in the next one.